How should you wire your batteries in parallel? In this video, I will show you three methods, break down their cost and share some additional tips. If you don't know me, I'm Nick, author of Off-Grid Solar Power Simplified. Let's get started. Before we dive into the setups, here are three things you need to know. First, every parallel battery must be fused. Here's why. If one battery develops a fault, it can dump its entire short circuit current into your other batteries. Fusing each battery prevents this dangerous situation. Second, if you're building a 24 or 48 volt system, use 24 or 48 volt batteries. Don't wire multiple 12 volt batteries in series. This creates a necessary complexity because batteries in series don't balance themselves. You will need to add balancers. Batteries in parallel, on the other hand, balance themselves. That's why parallel connections are always preferred. And lastly, you can wire different capacity batteries in parallel. For example, one 12 volt 100 amp hour battery and one 12 volt 200 amp hour battery. I made a video specifically for this, where I measure the current of each battery. Now, let's look at the three main setups. The first method is the simplest. You mount MRBF fuses directly on each battery terminal. Then run cables from each battery to your main bus bar. This is straightforward and works great for two or three batteries. Notice how we take the main positive from battery 1 and the main negative from battery 3. This helps with current sharing. The downside? It's the most expensive option, because all your cables need to be the same thickness, and MRBF fuses aren't cheap. You can install a DC breaker in the main line before it reaches the bus bar. This gives you a single switch to disconnect your entire battery bank which is convenient for maintenance. Make sure the breaker or fuse can interrupt the whole battery bank short circuit current, but more on that in my detailed video about selecting a main battery breaker or fuse. Instead of running cables diagonally, you wire each one individually to a single mega fuse bus bar. Your inverter and charge controller also branch off from the same bus bar. This saves money, because you can use thinner cables for each battery connection. You're not carrying the full system current through every wire. Mega fuses are also cheaper than MRBF fuses. However, this works best for a maximum of 2 or 3 batteries, because this mega fuse bus bar only has 5 fuse positions. One for your inverter, one for a charge controller, and three for your batteries. If you need to add another device, like a battery charger, you would need a separate fuse holder. In this example, you don't have a disconnect switch to disconnect your entire battery bank from the system. The third method is ideal when you have more than three batteries in parallel. Here, your batteries connect to a dedicated battery bus bar. This one can handle up to 5 batteries. Then you run a single large cable from the battery bus bar to your main system bus bar. This main cable needs overcurrent protection, either a breaker, class D fuse or NH00 fuse. This setup is clean and organized, plus there's plenty of room for expansion if you add more batteries later. This is basically the same concept as a Victron Lynx system. A Lynx power in, feeding a Lynx distributor. The difference is cost. Instead of spending $340 on these two Victron bus bars, you can build the same layout for $93 using two Megafuse bus bars plus two smaller standard bus bars. Let's compare the actual costs for a system with 3 batteries and a 3000 watt inverter. These prices include the bus bars, fuses and cables. Setup 1 
with MRBF users will cost you $278. Setup 2 with a single Megafuse bus bar will cost you $118. And the third setup with dual bus bars will cost you $234. As you can see, the single bus bar system is significantly cheaper for 3 batteries. But remember, it's limited to 3 batteries maximum. Now you might be wondering about wire and fuse sizing. I've made a separate video covering exactly how to calculate wire thickness and fuse ratings for your specific setup. I also have a video on handling different capacity batteries in parallel. I will link both in the description. Covering all that here would make this video very long. Here are a few more tricks you can use. If you're only combining two batteries with M or BF fuses, you can use single or double stud bus bars. This saves a lot of space and cost. Just remember, never put more than three lugs on one terminal and make sure the bus bar is rated for the maximum current in your system. This is usually the inverter. There's also a dual MRBF option, where one terminal connects to your inverter and another to your charge controller. One thing to keep in mind is that most MRBF terminal blocks have M10 holes, but some M8 versions exist, which is a better fit for the standard M8 battery posts. Not all fuses are created equal. Here's the biggest mistake I see. People using mega fuses on 48 volt systems. Standard mega fuses are only rated for 32 volts maximum. If you're running a 48 volt system, you need a fuse that can handle at least 60 volts, like a 70 volt rated mega fuse, an MRBF, class T, NH00 fuse, or a battery breaker. Using the wrong voltage rating is dangerous and can lead to catastrophic failure. I have made several videos about this topic. The links to these videos will be in the description. Quick note on cable lengths. You've probably heard that all your cables need to be exactly the same length. While matching lengths does help with current sharing, it's really not that critical in practice. Bus bar systems naturally distribute current better than daisy chained batteries. So yes, try to keep your wire lengths similar, but don't stress over a few inches of difference. So to recap, setup 1 is the easiest but most expensive. Great for small systems consisting of 2 or 3 batteries. Setup 2 is the cheapest, but is limited to 2 or 3 batteries due to bus bar space. And setup 3 is your best bet for 3 or more batteries. It's organized, expandable and reasonably priced. I hope you learned something new. If you did, give the video a like and leave a comment telling me how you wired your batteries in parallel. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.